How you doing? My name is Mark Carroll, and uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes while it's still fresh on my mind about witnessing, about the gospel, about Christians sharing their faith, uh, where we live, work, and play. Because my theme at our church and the Are You Fit Ministries is, Are You Fit? Faith influencing today, where you live, work, and play with the gospel in a powerful way. And I think the gospel itself is becoming watered down and the gospel is simply this the good news of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ how that he is the only way for us to have access to the Father and his death burial and resurrection is the only way that my sins can be forgiven and give me a new life in Christ and it's being watered down all over the place but we can't make it so simple that people don't understand what it is they're getting and I'll use a uh, witnessing a situation today. I was at the YMCA, I ran three miles on the treadmill, and then I was in the sauna. And as I always do, I try to strike up a conversation and lead that conversation into a gospel presentation. Or talking something spiritual to get somebody thinking. And I was talking to a fella, and I started striking up a conversation, and start talking about our bodies being the temple of God, and taking care of them, and telling them my story about losing 80 pounds, and um, getting all of my um, health statistics in line. And then he's, he sat up, and I'm sure his thought was, okay, I'm going to now start witnessing to this guy about my faith. So, come to find out, his dad is a pastor of a Gnostic church, G-N-O-S-T-I-C, Gnosticism. And we were talking about Jesus, and how that he is the source of truth and salvation. And see, here's something about Gnostics. They know they know enough about the Bible to confuse people who don't know a lot about the Bible. Listen, they know enough about the Bible to confuse people who don't know enough about the Bible. So he started talking about how that we do believe that Jesus died. We do believe that he rose from the, again from the dead. And he started making statements like he would, he would, he he is God. He has a part of he he now is part of God. Not that God is in him through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but that he now has become deity. And that one day when he dies, because he, in what he believes, he has the truth that he will advance into this new realm of living as a spiritual being. I said, well, wait a minute. What if you don't come to that realization of Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? What happens to you? He said, well, I definitely don't believe there's a hell. And that, that you do it again until you get it right. Because that's what Gnostics believe. It's all about knowledge. It's all about doing again over and over. It's in all the books and movies that we see today. And I'm finding Gnostics are everywhere in Charlotte. In fact, I, I actually witnessed to a woman two weeks ago who had an Ankh earring. And she believed the religion of the Whore of Babylon started by Nimrod and she worships Tammuz. So it's, it's, it's witnessing um, is more than just going somewhere, knocking on a door, and giving the gospel. We need to build relationships with people. We need to, when they say they accept Christ, they need to know that when they accept Jesus, that God, they don't become a God, but that Jesus lives in them through the Holy Spirit. Because I have discipled people, and we got the level list, um, book number five and and they said they were saved but they want to be disciple but by the time we got to book number five there's so much doctrine covered they said that's not what i believe i don't want any more to do with this so i believe it, 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 the bible teaches the imperative of the, the gospel is not soul winning but making disciples and i believe the reason for that is coming true today we have a lot of people who are saying the prayer and are getting baptized and are coming to church, but they're lost as a doorknob. They don't know what it is that they have. And then they, they might stop coming to church and then they meet up with a Gnostic who knows enough about the Bible to mess them up. And now they're going that direction. And they never really knew what it was that they had. They never really understood that Jesus was God. They never understood that the Holy Spirit lives in our heart. And, 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 and that God through the Holy Spirit lives in us, but that we are not God ourselves. Listen, understand this point. Gnostics know enough about the Bible to confuse people who don't know a whole lot about the Bible. So we got started talking, and he said, 
You know what this guy named Paul? He 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 wasn't around when Jesus was around, so we don't really listen to what he says. We listen to what Jesus said. You know that sounds good on the outside. We listen to Jesus' teachings. So I stopped him. I said, "What about Matthew 10?" And Jesus commissioned the original twelve disciples, and he said, "Take the kingdom of heaven preaching to the Jew, to the Jews, but don't take them to the Samaritans, and don't take them um, to the Gentiles." I said, "That's all of us." So when you're talking about Jesus' teachings, he left us out. He left everybody out but the nation of Israel. I said, so I'm not following today the teachings of Jesus as given to the twelve apostles. I'm following the teachings of Paul. As he was given the mystery of Christ and knew the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. The mystery that none of the Old Testament prophets knew about. The Old Testament prophets never saw the church coming. They saw Jesus' death and the kingdom. They didn't see the church. And they didn't see the church because the church is here because the Jews rejected the Messiah and they rejected the kingdom of heaven, a physical kingdom offer. And then the, when, when Paul accepted Christ, he became the mouthpiece for the gospel of the church age, which for everybody, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the kingdom of God, a, a, a spiritual kingdom, an invisible kingdom. John 3 says, the only way you can see this kingdom, the kingdom of God, is to have spiritual eyes through faith. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel one day. The kingdom of heaven doesn't exist today on this earth. It was offered to Israel, or rejected it, and it's on postponement until after the tribulation. And I talked to this man about that. I said, that's what Jesus taught the disciples. But what Paul taught was Christ in you, the hope of glory. And how that our sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ. And that we don't become a God. We have the God of this universe live inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And I witnessed him, and we were going back and forth. But I, after the, after we was finished, I wondered how many Christians could have explained to this man why what he was believing was incorrect through the Bible. Because most pastors and Christians I know would not have known how to explain to him why what he is teaching is not true. They would have just started focusing on Paul's teachings. That's not what he wanted to know. He, he rejected Paul's teachings. But when I showed him, here's what Jesus was teaching, here's what Paul was teaching, and, and you've got to understand the difference between the two, and how Jesus was the f uh, fulfillment of the law, and that today, if you want a relationship with God, and if you want to go to heaven, it's realizing that Jesus Christ is a Savior, that Jesus Christ is God. He came to this earth as a human. He died on the cross, rose from the dead, made the petition of His blood to the Father, and that satisfied the Father, and because He did that, I can have my sins forgiven when I believe in Him, because I believe Jesus is the Son of God, I believe Jesus is God, I believe that I only have uh, um, salvation and my sins forgiven through Jesus, and I was able to explain to this man who was a Gnostic in Charlotte, I was able to show him through scriptures how that he was taking Jesus' teachings out of context and applying them to himself when they were for Israel at a certain period of time when he was preaching to them about the kingdom of heaven being at hand. And I was able to show him how the, and another man came halfway in through the conversation, so the Gnostic left, and I was able to witness to this man and share with him the uh, spiritual application of the Old Testament law and how that applies today through the Pauline epistles to the church. And he said, well, how do I find out more about this? And I gave him the website to our church. And um, I said, you can go look at that. And when you want to sign up for directions, just let me know. But my, my point is this. Guys, <clears throat> when, when, when you witness today in your worlds of influence, where you live, where you work, and where you play, there is so much twisting of truth out there. There is so much half-truth that we got to be very careful that when someone says they're saved, we need to know what it is that they're trusting in. Because this man told me when we first started, yeah, I believe Jesus died and rose from the dead. But then when we continued our conversation, it was very apparent this man is lost. This man, if he died, was not going to go to heaven. He does not have a relationship with Christ through the Holy Spirit. 
but you got to get to know people. you got to talk to people. you got to know how to rightly divide the word truth. So hope you listen to this. If you want to know more, go to MyGraceWay.com. Sign up for our directions. I can take you through our, our 16 lessons of discipleship via email, and I'd love for you to get involved with that so you can know how to share the Word of God in a powerful way with people around you.